Hey YouTube, Tom here, and I finally have my Nintendo Switch review done. Uh, first off, I'd like to say how I got a Nintendo Switch. As you know, all my items I buy or I'm given by, you know, as a gift from family. This was a birthday gift. And just by dumb luck, this is how it works. If you were looking for a Switch, you still are having a hard time finding one. Um, but apparently my dad walked into Target one day, saw them on a counter, and asked if he could have one. So, you know, it's one of those things is if you were actively searching for one, you don't find it. But when that happens, so I was totally surprised to get this. Um, and, you know, I, the, the focus of this review, you know, there's a lot of reviews on Switch right now. But the focus is, I'm not a Nintendo fanboy. Um, History-wise, growing up as a little guy, I loved the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo. And every weekend I was dragging my parents to the local uh, video store so I could rent the next one. I must have rented every one of them. So I was a huge Nintendo and Super Nintendo kid. But, you know, as you got older, and as systems like the Sega came out and the PlayStation that seemed more mature, as a, as a young guy, you kind of gravitated to that and thought of Nintendo as the, the baby system. Um, that being said, I have had almost every Nintendo system since Nintendo, uh, with a few caveats, but, um, the thing is, I've only played them for about a month before the, the shine kind of wore off, and I was like, this is not for me. And some of them, like the Wii and the Wii U, I didn't even get past playing them a week or two before I was totally done with them. So I'm not really a, a, a Nintendo fanboy. So I'm coming in as a serious gamer to this. Uh, uh, to, to this. Um, I'm not even a fan of really the franchises that are synonymous with Nintendo. You have your Mario, your, your, your Zelda, Metroid, all those. You know, I, I'm not against them. I have nothing against them, and they're, they're fun, but I'm, I'm not, like, die-hard fan for either of them. So I'm coming into this, you know, as a lot of people. I know PC gamers, I know other console gamers, that as soon as they saw the video for the Switch, they wanted one. And I know people right now that have it, and they were actually really into it. I know one guy who actually took off of work just to play it. So, it's it's strange. It's, it's, a, it's a different feeling than when the Wii came out. Everybody was crazy about the Wii, came out, and then within, you know, a month, everybody's like, nobody wants to get off the couch and swing a controller around. We just want to play games. So, is it good for a, a non-Nintendo person? That's what this review is going to kind of touch on. And, you know, let's just get to it. Before we get too far, I want to stress that I haven't experienced any of the problems that a lot of people have been reporting about the, you know, left Joy-Con not syncing right or, or things like that, or scratches on the dock and stuff. I haven't experienced those problems, but I have experienced a few issues that aren't as widely known, and we'll get to those as they pop up. But um, one of my favorite things about this is the Joy-Con. And I say that because I thought this would be the one thing when I saw all the videos and pictures that I would hate. Because it's, they're tiny. Individually they're tiny. And in the grip it makes a square instead of your natural uh, controller like say a DualShock. This is a more natural feel. And then you have this, this square. But what I have to say is even for a guy with huge hands, even when they're apart, you know, they're not the most comfortable but they're definitely, you're, you'll be able to play with this. And when they're together, uh, I actually, after the, like the first 20 minutes, I noticed no difference. So if you've read a lot where the people are saying you have to go out and get a Pro Controller, which this is the Pro Controller, I'll touch on this in a second, it's, it's not necessary. I mean, you could get by easily with this. I had no problem playing with this. And it's got great battery life. It might even be better than, you know, Xbox and PlayStation when it comes to battery life. So it is a really nice controller. And even for people with these big bear paws, you're going to get along playing with these real nice. And if you have a problem with hands cramping, they do sell a little plastic thing that these can go in that makes it more like a controller. But perfectly fine. Um... There's a little strap, I don't have it out, but it goes on here and makes the buttons more clickable and it has a, a strap so you don't fling it through your TV. And what's also amazing about the Joy-Con is the fact that it has the ability to do just more than being a controller. Uh, it has HD rumble inside it. Now, it's not a crazy, uh, crazy rumbling feeling, you know, it, it's on par with DualShock, Xbox, but what's amazing is it, it comes out of these small little controllers to begin with. It also has the Amiibo function. I believe it's this joystick, you press it, you just put your little figure there, 
and it works. So that's another thing built into it. And you also got to remember this has got the gyroscopes and stuff for the motion play. All of that packed into these tiny little controllers that work. I mean, everything has a nice click to it, and it's just a nice quality. And I, like I said, it became one of my favorite. You can even play without the grip. It became one of my favorite things because I thought I would hate it. But in the end, I actually did like it. Now, say you need extra controllers, like this is the first system since, I don't know, like the original Nintendo that ships with the ability to have two-player controllers. I mean, this is two-player. If you need another controller, it actually does make more sense to get the Pro Controller. Because the Pro Controller is around, I think, 60 bucks. I think the Joy-Cons are $10 more. Plus, then you're probably going to want to take your Joy-Cons and add them to a grip. The Joy-Cons, when you buy them separately, don't come with a grip if you buy the pair. So you would need to pay either $15 or since you're going to have an extra set, you're going to need a way to charge them because the only way to charge these basic grips are on the Switch. And if the other two are on there, you're out of luck. So you'll have to probably invest in the charging grip, which is an extra $30. So you can see how it starts to add up versus just paying out the uh, $60 for the Pro Controller. When it comes to Pro Controller, it's nice. I mean, it, it's familiar, so it, it is more comfortable, but I must stress that it's not necessary because these on their own are pretty comfortable in my opinion. But um, everything works on it nice. I like the triggers, and it also has um, all the functions, HD rumble, uh, Amiibo support if you just press it to the top there. It even has the gyroscopes for when you're doing your crazy puzzles in Zelda. It works it works good. So if you need a third controller, go ahead and get this. If you need four controllers, um, it still might end up being... It, I think it works out to only $20 more to get two Pro Controllers versus getting, say, two Joy-Cons and a charging grip. So, I mean, you got to look at the sales, see what you think, if it, what, what works for you. But um, I would say if also if you know someone in the family that has dexterity issues, arthritis, this could become an issue. So a pro controller starts to make more sense or you can get the four and then just give them one hole like this. But in a whole, I really like the way controllers are handled. And as silly as it is, that little click that's in the commercials... That's that's just awesome. That's like when the action hero walks into the movie and, you know, racks the shotgun. Maybe not that dramatic, but it is a good, satisfying feeling when you click that in. I will say, though, it is a little awkward. You don't, when you're trying not to hit any other buttons, to get these little buttons. Because there's buttons everywhere up here, and you have to press that down to get them out. But that's just a little nitpick. But all in all, like I said, great controller. Also, I, I touched on it before, charge-wise, I've never had an issue. I always charge them after gameplay, but I've heard that these have a 40-hour battery life or something like that, so insane amount of battery. I touch on another point. The only game right now that uh, requires or has been advertised as needing four individual Joy-Cons is ARMS. And that's not even out yet, I don't know that they, but it's like you hold one in each hand and you box. And if you want to do two people, local multiplayer, you're going to need two sets. But I mean, is that enough to go out and spend a little extra to get two more of these for only one game that's been announced so far? I don't know. And like I said, you could also play that game with a controller. So one person could play control and the other one, but who knows, it's up to you guys. Now the tablet itself is, you know, I really like. Um, it's light, it's a bit thick, but considering that this is the entire workhorse of the system, this is the console, it's actually amazing that's all in here. You got USB Type-C, you got vents galore, you have uh, volumes, you have your power button, you have a game door that I'm kind of a little, I, I don't like this. The first time I opened it, it has now got this, it doesn't sit, it doesn't click and stay shut. Just kind of there as a cover. That's a nitpick, but I don't know. It reminds me of old digital cameras where they used to have the little plug that went in for the memory card. But anyways, they have a headphone jack and a uh, headphone, I gotta say, really bad. Um, well, really bad is a little exaggeration. I just don't think it gets loud enough. I think they did that on purpose because kids will be using this and they don't want to make kids deaf. That would not be a good story for Nintendo. But I have have stuff that gets a lot louder. And if you're in a loud enough room, you're going to hear everything in the room. So kind of a knock there. Um, more vents. The Nintendo logo. And under this kickstand is where you got your memory card. 
and we're going to touch on that. The kickstand itself is like on the same as like those cases you get for your phone off Amazon. You don't want to really trust them as much. It's there really isn't much strength here. So go ahead and close that. Uh, so you press your power button. This has been in sleep mode, and it says press A to continue. So I got to get the controllers. We're going to go snap them on here. And if you see, I don't know if it'll do it from the lock screen. But usually when you put a controller on, uh, see, a little blue light comes on to tell you, okay, you're in this kind of mode. Now, screen-wise, I have nothing to complain. You know, usually I'm kind of a snob when it comes to screens. But the thing about this is it's a really nice 720p screen. And when you're playing games and stuff like that, it's, it, it's, it's definitely good enough. And because it's 720, it lends to how much battery power you get. Um, battery um, is pretty good. I've gotten over three hours. And that's playing Zelda of all things. There's easier games that like the retro games that might get a little bit more because they're not as intensive. But considering how cool and what goes into you know playing a game of Zelda's caliber, you know it's not the most intensive game out there, but it's it's for a handheld it is, and it really does. Uh, you know I'm impressed with the battery life. The actual speakers on the unit aren't bad either. Battery life is good. I mean, if you're on an extended trip, you might have to find somewhere to plug in. And like other people have said, because the power port is on the bottom, the USB Type-C, if you have it lit on a table, you're not going to be able to plug it in, so you'll need another stand. But I mean, you're going to be... I, I could hold it and plug it into a, an outlet and be fine with that. But um, it's kind of hard to bring it up here under the lights. But it is really an awesome looking game. Zelda itself, you know, I'm like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the Zelda series, but this game is, it's something else. It does not do anything really new than anybody else has done, but there's something just magical about it that anybody who plays it loves it. So it does everything just right. You know, I don't want to make this a video about Zelda, but it really is a must-have, and uh, it was probably the most perfect game you could pick to have as your as a launch title um as of other games i don't have many i have a demo for tetris i have a demo for snipper clippers and i just haven't gotten around to get any any more um but it's it's not like you could say that there's not a lot out there to be had and if you look at the lineup there's not a lot coming either um everything's getting announced you know every week there's something kind of new but it is kind of then and it, it it leads you to believe there's not going to be the same su support that other systems get. Like, Nintendo never has third-party support. But I think that's going to change because this is a really awesome, awesome console. And I think people are going to step up. And every week, you do hear something new. And like I said, if you're into retro games, there's a lot of stuff like Neo Geo games, like Metal Slug and King of Fighters. I didn't know Nintendo had, you know, access to that, but they're on here. So there's a lot of, like, cool stuff you can play. And these retro games, you should be able to play these for hours on end because they're not demanding. But um, if retro games aren't your style, and the few handful of things that are out now aren't your style. I know Mario Kart, I'm getting that next week. I'm not even a Mario Kart guy, but I'm excited for it on this system. And Street Fighter, you know, you're going to say another old game, but I'm excited to play. I haven't been excited for Street Fighter in years. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's game-wise, you got to take it. Try try something new. Maybe you don't think you're going to like Mario Kart or something, but, you, you know, it's a whole new system. If it wasn't for the uniqueness of the system, would this be as interesting if this was just a console that sat on the wall? Maybe not. But, um... Like I said, you, you got to take it with a grain of salt. When I got my Xbox One originally, there was nothing to play for months. I had got it in hopes that, you know, I could play some of my old, like, Elder Scrolls, you know, in the meantime, not knowing it didn't have backwards compatibility, and I went months without something to play that I liked. The fact that I have Zelda and two other games on the way, that's not so bad, so I can't say, oh, they have no games. I want to touch that, I believe the screen is plastic, it's not Gorilla Glass, which is you know, not a good thing. Um, I would suggest getting yourself a good case. This is the Nintendo Deluxe travel case, I believe it's called. Even the accessories for the Switch are hard to come by, but this is one of the better ones. It's pretty heavy duty. I like it. Uh, I forget, I think it was 25 to for it, but um, even if you're going to bring it downstairs where maybe somebody might knock into it, 
I, I always put it in the case when I'm leaving my room. So that's that's a good investment because of the screen itself. Um, as for it getting scratches when you put it in the dock, my dock is at knee level, so I have I'm not you know putting it in super careful or lined up. And not once have I got a scratch on the screen yet. Um, not saying it doesn't happen, but it hasn't happened to me. Now when it comes to how memory is on the system, it's weird. They only gave you 32 gigabytes on the system itself, which is kind of crazy. You, you, with two to three games, you're going to have your entire system taken up. You can put in a micro SD card like I have here, a real nice big one, but for the most part it's used for screenshots. You can't move game data or save data to there. The only time that you can kind of get around this is by buying digital games. Digital games will default to that location. So, you know, I, either they have to allow you to move that kind of stuff to this SD card, or they should have shipped it with more data or more, more memory because this is just this is just not enough these days, especially with the the cart games. You can have a white or black mode. Of course, I pick black. Easier on the eyes. You're going to save some battery. Now, as satisfying as it is to click the controllers onto the, the switch itself, there's also the satisfying feeling of when you get the switch into the dock. And boom, pops up right here on the screen. Now, the dock is simply a place that you can plug in your HDMI cord, and the power cord, which is USB Type-C, can also be used to plug directly into the switch. And then that is all rooted to one single USB uh, Type-C when you put it inside. So it's really just a case with a simple connector that this plugs into. Now there is a problem that arises from this switch dock. I love it, but there is a problem with it. And that is that you're going to have to make some concessions on where to place it. First of all, this is a tall unit. Um, I don't have a measuring tape, but it is tall. It's taller than my Xbox or my PlayStation. And not only do you have to have space for the unit, you have to have space to get the switch in. So you're talking about maybe a good uh, vertical foot. So if you have a shelf or you have uh, you know doors on your entertainment system, you're going to have to make a concession. I had to go up here next to the sound bar right under my TV because there is nowhere that I could do it on my entertainment system. You're going to find a place, but then comes the problem of length of cords. Now, they're not short cords, but the fact is when you have to put it in a weird place, something might not reach. For instance, my Uconnect box, which has all of the connections for my TV, was down there in the corner where everything else was able to fit it get to, but not, not all the way up here, and my surge protector over there, which uh, it's not as much of a fire hazard as it looks, I, I swear, is over here. So I could reach one or the other, but not both. Luckily I was able to, you know, mess around with some cords and get the connect box on the second shelf, and it just, you know, fits. But cord management and just simply getting everything plugged in can be annoying, especially on that first setup when you just want to get to playing. Now it's also worth noting that there is a problem with the switch with Samsung TVs and other devices. Now my switch is on HDMI 4, my PlayStation, and uh, this is just an example, is on 3. I'll switch to 3, and we're on PlayStation here, um, and it should happen pretty instantaneously. When the switch is in sleep mode, it will force itself back to that input within a few minutes. Now if it doesn't happen here, I'm just going to go through and explain this. Now to explain it better is, you could be on Xbox, PlayStation, any other input, watching TV, and out of the blue, the switch will send a signal from sleep mode to your TV, which then prompts the TV to switch to that input. It does not come on. You will be switched to a black screen, and then when you switch back, it usually is almost instantaneous sometimes, it'll keep going back until either A, you pull it from the dock, or B, do a full shutdown. It doesn't look like it's going to do it because I'm videotaping it right now, but it's really annoying when you're in the middle of a game or you're watching live TV. And if you're not home and someone who's not familiar with the setup is trying to watch TV and that happens, you're probably going to get chewed out. 
So it is an annoying thing. It's got a hundred uh, posts on the Nintendo forum pl asking, please, somebody issue some kind of update that will fix this. And like I said, it's super annoying. And the thing is, the only way to completely shut it down is you can't do it from the controllers. You have to do it from the Switch itself. So if it's in the dock, you go over and you long press the, I believe it's the power button, until it shuts itself down after like 10 seconds. You can't select anything with the Joy-Cons when they're attached in the dock, and you can only put it in sleep mode from, uh, in, can only put it in sleep mode from the Joy-Cons when they're dis disabled. Now as soon as I stopped recording that, it actually did it, so let's see if I switch it back to HDMI 3 if it'll do it again immediately. Either way, this is kind of a super annoying, super annoying tick, because you want to have it docked. You, it looks great. There we go. It just did it on its own. Back to HDMI 4. And it'll keep on doing this and going to a black screen until you pull it or until you completely shut it down. Yeah, when it's docked, you can't even use the Joy-Cons when it's attached, so you have to keep holding down the power button, and that forces it shut down. Um, I've actually shut it down before docking it, and the screen kind of lights up for a second. I think that just boots it back into sleep mode because I've had the same exact thing happen with the switching. So it's a really annoying p piece to this almost perfect system. Um, really, really have to fix that, and I really hope to see that soon. Also want to mention that you can charge your Pro Controllers by two USB ports that were on the side of the dock. I forgot to say that. Um, I did have an issue uh, originally where Wi-Fi, as you can see up in the corner, the little Wi-Fi signal. Wi-Fi would not connect until I put it into handheld mode, which was really annoying because there was updates at the time. Um, and on updates, games and the system itself have gotten updates so far. Uh, the only thing is... They don't tell you exactly what the heck they are. Um, it is annoying, but the thing is, uh, you, every time you get one something, it does seem to get a little better. Uh, the confirmed update for Zelda was that it was able to, I believe, run in 1080p on the dock. When you're here in the uh, here on the dock, um, while most games, uh, while most of the updates so far have been pretty vague on what they did, they did do an update for Zelda where uh, it locked the frame rate at 30 frames per second and some other and some other uh, tweaks. What I could say is the game as a whole runs a heck of a lot better because when a game is put into the dock, it's, I don't want to say it's upscaled, but it, it, it's not 720 anymore. I think it goes up to 900. And because of that, the system has to work harder. So, you know, sometimes you get some slowdown. So the game was great as it was, but the, the moment we got that update, it was even better. I really enjoy it now, and uh, I enjoyed it to begin with. You know, I didn't think it was possible that they could just issue an update that would make the game work better, because nothing about the hardware changed. But it, it does work a heck of a lot better, and it's a lot more uh, fluid, even in, you know, crazy battle scenes. You're not going to have any, any problems with slowdown. And it, it what's wonderful about this game... or What's great about this system is it's fun to play as a handheld, take it anywhere with you, but it's also awesome just to sit down and put it on a big screen. So it, it, it works both ways. It's not just going to be for people who like handhelds. It's not going to be for people who like traditional consoles. It's, it's for everybody. It's just a great game and a great system. On the home screen here you have a section called News. It's kind of just like one big advertisement for what's coming out next. But what's new? Every console has something like this. And it, it, it's alright. You know, that there's Super Street Fighter. Like I said, I haven't been interested in Street Fighter in years. And I can't wait for that. Um, one Two Switch it, uh, is a game that, you know, really showcases the party aspect of this system. You could take it with you and do this kind of stuff. I would have picked it up, but a lot of people are saying it's not worth full price. It needs... Uh, it only has 25 games, and only a few of those are actually fun, so I'll wait for it to go on sale. Um, but there's just a lot of neat stuff that if you just, you know, are willing to go out of your what you're usually into and give it a try, I think a lot of people are going to be happy with the games that they can find. And the thing is, yes, it's going to be a while before some major games hit, but Zelda is massive. I've, 
you know, people think Mass Effect's massive. I feel like I could finish Mass Effect Andromeda before I finish Zelda. Because I just unlocked the rest of the map. Or I just took a look at the map the other day and I was like, wow. And there's an expansion pass for it. So there's even more game to come with Zelda. So if you're if Zelda does it for you, that's going to hold you off until something else comes out. But like I said, Mario Kart next week. Street Fighter. ARMS. The, all these games. Mario Odyssey. The, some of them don't have... Uh, you know, release dates yet, but every week I'm telling you guys, something new is announced that it's coming out. Um, also, there's this Nintendo Rewards thing. It works for a few mobile games, like Mario Run and the Miimoto app and crap like that. But the cool thing is you also get points for the games that you buy. I think it's automatic for digital, and when it's games like Zelda, where it was a physical copy like I had, you, uh, you hit go into the settings, and then there's this. And you can earn points over here. It's only you only do it once, and I, it probably doesn't work for used games. But you go in there, poof, you get the points. At the moment, though, last time I checked, you can't use them on any of the Nintendo eShop for Switch games. It's like 3DS and Wii U or something. But, I mean, that's a natural progression. They're, it's going to come to the Switch eventually. <clears throat> Now, when I filmed that, I forgot to mention that there is no apps like you would find on PlayStation and Xbox, like Netflix, like Hulu, all those video providers. And it kind of doesn't make sense being how portable the device is. It would be great if it could act like a tablet and do some of those things like video providers. But at the same time, nearly everything in the world can do that. I mean, you, there's fridges that can, you know, look at Twitter and stuff. So I can, if it, if it's, you know, sacrifice something to have a better gaming experience, I'm totally all right with it. I know they've said something like Netflix is coming in the future, but really, I don't care if it did or not. It would be nice if it's there, but it really isn't a game game breaker. Now, when you click on like the shop and stuff, it it does take a bit of bit of while for it to load in. You know, it's not horrible, but it's not snappy. But what I re seem to remember is when I installed Zelda, the install went super quick. So that's kind of a plus. Um, I, I touched on this early before. There's a lot of indie stuff in here and retro stuff. There's also the games that have been released too. So it's a very small store at the moment. But um, you might find some. I, like I'm kind of tempted. I used to love King of Fighters and Metal Slug in the arcade when I was a kid. So th there's stuff in here for the nostalgia. There's stuff in here, you know, that th that just came out. So it's a good mix, but it is it's small, very it's very small right now. You also have your album here on the main screen, where when you take a screenshot, there's a little dedicated button, kind of like on they have on PlayStation, where you hit it, it takes a screenshot, and you can share it to Facebook and Twitter, which is cool. I've done it a few times, and they actually come out really nice looking on social media. And graphic-wise, I want to touch on is there is a certain style to Zelda that was really smart because this is not the most powerful machine out there. It's not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, you know, an Xbox or a PlayStation 4 Pro, but it's not trying to. And I always thought it was a cop-out when people would say, oh, uh, Nintendo's not trying to compete with, uh, with Xbox or PlayStation, but it's not. When I play the Nintendo Switch... It's more about just relaxing and having fun. And it might sound corny, but you feel like a kid again on summer vacation. Whereas when you play PlayStation, when you play Xbox, it's it's often intense. There's often a lot to do. It can almost feel like work. And, uh, you know, it's, they're both a different kind of playing that I really do enjoy. Um, I actually am drawn more to the Switch lately. Like, it's easy to get into, put down, pick up the Switch than it is to go, wow, I still probably have a good 13 more hours in Horizon Zero Dawn. It's not that I dread playing that game. I love that game. But there is a, a different feeling. So, it, you know, graphics-wise, it doesn't need to be that sharp. And the great thing is, they're smart about it. They made Zelda for this system. Uh, it's just amazing to me that they thought that far ahead. I mean, it's a massive game. And it looks good because of the art style, which also makes it not as demanding so that they could do more with the game on this system. And it's going to cause, you know, developers to have to think a little differently. But I think 
if they do, we're going to see some great games. I'm actually interested to see how they're going to do Skyrim on this system. That's going to be insane. And I have to say, I'm super happy with this system, guys. Um, you know, I feel blessed that my parents were able to get this for me for my birthday. And, um, you know, I feel blessed about everything I have, you know. Thank God I have a job that affords me the money to do this. So, um, it's, if I had to pick between all the consoles, I'd still have to go with my PlayStation. Their, their exclusives are killer. It's like playing a movie. And I, I just love my PlayStation. That's not to say that the Switch isn't in second place. Xbox, I'm going to get flack for this, but Xbox isn't even competing in this lineup in my mind. There's just nothing to play on it. Uh, but PlayStation first, then the Switch. It's, it's fun. It's a great first system for people. It's a great, you know, secondary system for, you know, us serious gamers. It's just all around something special. And it, like I say, it's not, it's a different feeling than the Wii was. Where you thought, oh wow, this is new, and then it faded. I could see myself playing this for quite a while. Um, you know, I hope they fix that dock situation. It is super annoying to not be able to keep it in that convenient place to charge when it's going to keep on switching my TV. So Nintendo, please fix that. Um, accessories. Get accessories and switches manufactured and into people's hands before the buzz is gone. Because people are probably going to start to say, you know what, screw it. I don't want it. And they're going to miss out on a great experience. Um, I would love to see extra docks made available so I can don't have to climb behind my entertainment system, take it apart so I can bring it down to the family room. And I hope they're not $90 like they're being advertised. It's plastic and cords, come on. That's like, what, a, a third of the price of an actual system? So let, let's get that price down. Let's not just raise the price because we can. But, um, guys, if you can get a hold of one and you think that you'd be interested in it even a little bit, uh, you get it, because it is fun. Don't be that dude that goes out and buys three of them when he sees them and puts them on eBay for $700. Don't be a scumbag. Go get a job. Leave it for, you know, that poor kid that wants to play it. But um, other than that, guy, great system. I think you're going to really enjoy it. I might even do a little update video when I have a uh, Mario Kart in my hands to tell you how it works with three controllers. But, um, you know, definitely get it, guys. Super awesome system. And that's it. Uh, any questions, go ahead and comment below. I, I don't have a problem answering any questions. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all that stuff, guys. Helps out a lot. You know, makes me want to do this more with the items that I have. Um, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at EdgeLimited13. That's uh, kind of where you're going to know what I'm doing, what I uh, videos I have coming. And I always am. I'm a huge geek, if you hadn't somehow figured that out. So there's always geeky stuff on there. There's always pop culture stuff on there. And if I find a great deal on technology, I usually share it too. So go ahead and follow me on there. And until next time, guys, stay cool.